This is 5 Minute Power Platform, and today we're going to talk about multi select option sets. They're really useful, but they can be a little challenging to get data out of. So, I'm going to show you how to get the actual labels out of the multi select, shop, select option set so you can use them in an email or wherever else you need them so you're not just looking at the IDs. And if you haven't used a multi select option set, here they are in a model driven application. I've created a new uh, pizza ordering type application, so I can put in an order name here. And then I can select topics here. This is the multi select option set. So, I could pick these topics off. And you see as I add them in there, they get added in at the top. I can remove one and, uh, and save them. Now the problem is in this case, if you wanted to send an email to someone confirming their order was pepperoni and olives, uh, it's a little difficult because here's what's inside. And so if we open up uh, Jonas Rapp's Fetch XML Builder, we can see what's actually inside the database. And if I refresh this query here, we can see here that this uh, last one here that we created, it's actually storing these two IDs here, and those are the corresponding IDs of the two toppings that we selected. And those, the, the, the mapping between those names and those IDs is stored in this entity here called string map. And so if I refresh this here, we can see we've got all of the things that we see in the different option sets are available here and coded by language. 1033 is English. I'm gonna ignore language as I build this out, but just know that if you have multiple languages in your environment, you can also incorporate that into what we're gonna build so that you can filter out for different languages as well. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a flow that's then going to take those out uh, and filter them out based upon what was, uh, what was submitted for that particular entity. So in our case, it was, I think, pepperoni and olives. We're just going to filter out for these two and return the actual value so that we can then use those elsewhere in the flow. So how we're going to do this, our flow is first going to gather the actual IDs, those numbers from the field values. And then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, create an array of those and use that to create a fetch XML statement that we could then gather the string map values, the actual labels that correspond to those. And then we'll create an array or create a string. Somehow we can output those back out. So it's kind of three simple steps, but it's going to take a few more actions than that to actually build the, build the flow. So starting here at the flow homepage, we're going to go to solutions. We're going to create a new solution so that we get access to uh, the, uh, the best new common data service connector. So I'll click new solution. We'll call this one multi-select video. And just give it a publisher that I've already created and then get this started. Now from once we're inside the solution then, we can create our new flow. So we'll do new flow. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna trigger off when a new pizza topping uh, record is created. And so I'm going to use the current environment connector for the common data service. So I'll search for current environment. And we'll say when a record is created, updated, or deleted. Let's not forget to name this thing too. Multi-select option set labels. All right, and so our trigger condition is gonna be when a new pizza is created. So we'll go to our pizza entity, pizzas. And I haven't applied any security to these, so these will just be organization-wide. And then we'll add a new step to get a record. So we'll search for the current environment connector again. And then we'll do get a record. And the reason I'm gonna get the record afterwards is I found that when I ran this directly here, here's a previous example. When the trigger was called, I didn't actually have the IDs for the toppings come through in the results. And so we're gonna do a second call to actually get the record and then we'll get all of the data we need. So pizzas, we need the item ID, and that's flowing down from above here. So pizza. And now we'll notice that when we get this here, when we run it, we'll get all of the examples about the record. And so we can see here, we'll see the topics come through right here. And so you can see the actual IDs. And so these are the IDs that we're going to take down, match against the string map, and look up their values. And no, you don't need to do this if you're actually going to just uh, take one of the values and do some logic on it. Like what's, let's say you wanted to cancel any pizza that had pineapple on it, right? Which is a smart thing to do. You can actually just take the IDs here, like the toppings, and you could say, hey, if it contains whichever value has uh, pineapple, which we come back over here, and we look at our toppings, we could see that uh, uh, pineapple, oh, I had it open, pineapple is this number here, right? We could, we could just do that without having to do any of the work we're doing. 
And so the work I'm doing here, of course, make sure you take the commas out too, right? And so the work we're doing here is really only if you want the labels out to use them in an email or some other way of communicating the selections back to the user. But just know that you don't need to do it if you're just going to filter on the values. You can use those IDs directly in that way. All right, we'll allow pineapple to, to continue on this. And so first thing we're doing is we're going to create two variables. One is going to be the, um, the list of IDs that we're going to use to filter out our fact XML to get the string map back. And the second one then is going to be the labels, the, the, the end result we want. And so let's, uh, let's create those two variables. And so we're going to initialize a variable. And this one we're going to cause, call the uh, fetch option set filter condition. It's going to be a string. And we're going to initialize it. We're not going to initialize it at all. Let's just give this thing a name though. So it's going to be fetch option set initialization, filter initialization. And then the next variable is going to be the list of strings that we want out of it. Initialize, and then uh, multi-select results, multi-select labels. Call this one a string. We're also not going to initialize that. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure there's something selected because if it's null, then all of our logic won't work. And so we're going to do a condition here, and we're going to make sure that the toppings, in my case, because that's my multi-select field, we're going to make sure that the toppings is not equal to null. And if it is null, maybe we want to do just a case we're going to use this label. We may want to just set that variable to uh, none or however you want to handle this. So I'm going to set the, the output labels. I'm just going to set it to uh, no toppings selected. Now over here, then, we're going to actually do the work of getting the values out. And so the first thing we're going to do then is we're going to do a, a compose action. And compose is when we cause, call any expression. And we're going to do a compose that's going to take those, uh, those values. And if you remember over here, there are, it's a comma separated list of IDs. And so we're going to split that on, on commas and turn it into an array then that we can loop around. And so we're going to use an expression to do that. And the expression is going to be uh, first create an array and create an array by splitting so array split, and then we're going to split the list of toppings. And so let's look for, uh, let's do get a record. Let's see more until we can see the toppings. And then the second parameter of split, you can see here is the separator and the separator is a comma. And so I'm just going to put a comma in there. So we'll put that in here. Now we're going to get out of it from this an array of toppings. And so then we can do an apply to each. And so let's go to control, apply to each, and we're going to apply to each of the toppings. So what we're going to do then is we're going to take this output and we're going to build fetch, fetch XML for it. And if I come back to fetch XML builder, you can see the type of fetch, fetch XML we're going to build. So we're going to filter the string map based upon the uh, attribute that we're looking for, the option set name, CRM 917 toppings in my case, and then we're going to filter it by those IDs that we just broke out into an array. And so then we'll get a filtered list that we can then iterate through. So our fetch XML looks like this. We've got this value section that's going to be the IDs of the, uh, that are actually stored on the record. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create this chunk of text here with the uh, variable that we created earlier. And so by iterating through this, we're just going to append to our string variable. And so this is going to be the filter condition. We're going to put those value tags on either side of it. Value and value to close it. And then in the middle is going to be the actual ID, and that's going to be our current item. And so once we have that, then we can use our current environment connector for the common data service to execute that fetch XML against the string map entity. So let's bring this up here. We're going to list records. And then we're going to choose the string map, right? That's the one that has our labels for all of the, uh, um, for all the option sets. And then what we're going to do is we're going to select only the value. That's the one that actually has the, uh, the label that we care about. And then our fetch XML, we're going to use this base fetch XML that we were just looking at here. So let's just copy this in here. But for the value section here, those are actually going to come from that string that we just populated in the block above. 
And so that is our fetch option set filter condition variable. And then the last step then is we can iterate on the returned values because we're going to get an array of returned values. And so we'll do another apply to each and basically undo those and then bring them back into a string. We'll just do a comma separated string, kind of a rough one, um, so that we can then output those. And so then we're going to append to this multi-select label string. And so again here we'll take our variables. We're going to append to a string variable. It's going to be our labels. And the value we'll put in is just from the list of records, the value. And notice there's a value and there's a capital value. The capital value here is the one that actually has the label. It's a little bit confusing. And then at the end, let's just send an email confirming the order. And so for now, I'm just going to send this to me using the uh, send an email event or, ac or action. Your pizza order. You got these toppings. And then I'll just insert the variable here that has the multi select labels. And now we can test this out. Let's save this, put it in test mode. Now let's come over here and we'll create a new pizza entry. So we'll call this one a uh, new pizza test. And let's add on uh, what looks good here pepperoni, no olives. I want some peppers and some bacon. Let's save that out. And we watch this, we should see our flow pick it up here in a minute. And we'll see here it picked up the record. And we got the record. We got the uh, list of toppings here. We initialize those variables, it passes the condition and the null check, right? So it says there actually is data there. We compose that array by doing a split. And then we apply to each one of these to create our spring, string variable that has the fetch XML value condition. We put that into the fetch XML here. You can see here value with the three different IDs for the three toppings. That returns our values, our actual labels. And we can see here pepperoni, peppers, and bacon. Those are appended together in that step there. And then we have here, you've got these toppings. It looks like I didn't put my commas on there, but at least we got the labels out. And then it sent us an email with uh, munch together toppings. So that's an example of how to get the actual labels for a multi-select. So if you're gonna use this in production, you'd probably wanna implement this as a child flow. And that's what I've done here. And I'll include this in GitHub. Uh, where it takes two parameters here. It takes the actual values, so that comma separated list of IDs from the records, and also the name of the option set itself, not the field on the entity, but the actual name of the option set. And then it does those other steps, initializes the variable, it checks to make sure it's not null, composes, does a list record out of fetch XML, and notice one of the parameters here in the fetch XML is the name of the option set, and so I've replaced that with the parameter for this child flow. Everything else is about the same. We do an apply to each, append to a string variable, and then you respond back with that string variable. Now the parent flow then would look like this. You have the trigger, you do the get a record so that you get the actual IDs for the labels out, and then you run the child flow, passing in the IDs and the actual name of the option set, and then you get back from that the result that you can then use. And so this way you could use this run a child flow against many different entities and many different option sets and kind of have that logic encapsulated in one spot. So this is how you can work with multi-select option sets which are very useful, but there are gonna be a lot of times when you're gonna to wanna to get the actual labels out for those options. And this is how you could do it using Power Automate. Thanks for watching.